So this evening is the anniversary of the death of Jesus. Now, I used to attend Watchtower's memorials years ago, and here was an opportunity for Watchtower to discuss with millions of people the enormous love that God had shown for us in arranging for Jesus to come and sacrifice his life for us. But I used to come away a bit disappointed and not really understanding the talk that they gave. And I sometimes wonder if the speaker understood what he was talking about. So let's have a quick look at what could have been discussed. When we go back to the beginning, when sin came into the world, God put in place a plan. And the enormity of that plan is something it's good to reflect upon. It involved Jesus Christ. Now, over the centuries, God had to show great love for us, even though we weren't worthy of it. He gave us the Mosaic Law, for instance, which taught us that we needed God's love and we needed a sacrifice to pay for our sins. Then the Lord arranged for many prophecies to be made so that we would recognize Jesus when he came. So we could start off in Deuteronomy 18 and verse 15, where Moses says, Yahweh your God will raise up for you a prophet like myself from among yourselves, and to him you must listen. There were many other prophecies, and I'll put the references below. There was that Jesus was to be born in Bethlehem of a maiden. He was to be the son of David. He would have great zeal for God's temple, which fulfilled when Jesus cleansed the temple twice. It was prophesied that he would teach in parables. In Daniel chapter 9, that at the half of the week, in other words, three and a half years into his ministry, he would die and put an end to the Mosaic law need for sacrifices because Jesus was paying the ultimate sacrifice. Now, probably the most important prophecy of all for us today is Isaiah 53. And you might like to read the whole chapter, but just verses 4 and 5 for the moment. It says that ours were the sufferings he bore, Ours, the sorrows he carried, but we, we thought of him as someone punished, struck by God and brought low. Yet he was pierced through for our sins. He was crushed for our faults. On him lies a punishment that brings us peace. And through his wounds we are healed. We weren't worthy of the amount of love that God and Jesus had for us in Jesus paying this huge price, but he did willingly and out of his love and as a free gift. Now, when Jesus was resurrected, he discussed with his disciples from the Psalms and the prophets all the prophecies regarding him. But now he is, as a king, we can see what sort of king we have, and we'll start off in Isaiah 9, where it talks about Jesus establishing his power in justice and integrity and in a peace that has no end. In Isaiah 11, it says <coughs> sorry, that on him the spirit of Yahweh rests, a spirit of wisdom and insight, a spirit of counsel and power, a knowledge and the fear of Yahweh. He will not judge by appearances, and it goes on to say he will give a verdict for the poor and he will give um, help to the poor of the land. Now, in Isaiah 42, we are like the crushed reeds and the flickering candle flame, which is about to go out because we've been so hurt by so many things. But this is what it says about Jesus. He does not cry out or shout aloud or make his voice heard in the streets. He does not break the crushed reed or quench the wavering flame. He brings true justice and he will not waver nor will he be crushed. This is the best king we could 
possibly wish for. But when he came to earth, he taught us that we needed to be the same that he was, to show love for our fellow man. This was the ultimate answer to all the earth's problems, to share what we have, to do good works, and ultimately to show faith in Jesus' sacrifice. So if we can reflect on that today, our faith and our love for Jesus Christ will grow as we read through these prophecies and think about what Jesus has done for us.